Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back to League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you guys for an episode where it feels like we can finally take a deep breath. You get, what is it, three days break in between the LPL, the LEC, for whatever reason, has three weeks off. It's like our final last breath before we prepare for Worlds, which means we get the full preview experience for what feels like the actual first week of LCS playoffs and the LPL finals. It's the late cash-in of the summer vacation, seems to be the way that it is with this little one. And of course, very fitting that the LPL's vacation is only about three days and the LEC slams in three weeks before we're getting to that next bit of action. Doesn't mean that there wasn't action out there on the rift because the LCK deciding and finalizing out who's going to be in what playoff spots, what the seeding is going to be, and even a couple of records up for grabs still in this split. And I was I was ready. Gen G, Hanwha, Hanwha current form. They're beating up on all the lower tier teams. Let's see it. I want them tested. They can give Gen G a run for their money. First fight around Rift Herald. You're saying, okay, here comes Hanwha life. Wolf is calling the game over at that point for Hanwha. And then... Ten minutes later, you look and Chovy's just on his nine and one, and the game is over. Huh? What happened? Genji activated is what happened because yes, it is Hanwha Life grabbing those early advantages, early kills, and nothing comes from that power, from that pressure, and it opens the floodgates for what Genji wants to do, how they want to influence this game. And you've got two mega players in the likes of Chovy and Peanut leading the charge throughout game one. And you got Doran again. We've been highlighting him, the always seemingly the last guy to talk about on this Gen G squad, but this guy to me, hands down, no question, has been the second team all pro top laner all split long. He could never quite crack into that first one. Even when Zeus isn't playing that well, you got a guy named Keen who's the top dog. But he certainly has put out enough of these performances, enough of these warning shots to the rest of the top laners in the LCK that this is a Doran that continues to level up, continues to sharpen himself and his tool shed of what he can bring to the Rift for Gen G. That is a factor that I don't think is quite valued nearly enough. And we see him in this series take it with, you know, whatever type of resources he's getting or whatever little resources he's getting in these situations and he finds a way to get the job done very big and, and you know having a better performance than Kingen in this first game you go to that second game and you are expecting Kingen to slam it down he's on that world championship Atrox uh-uh it's Doran's time to shine yeah and what this is supposed to be the absolutely nutty busted Atrox that is completely broken in the game and yeah Doran has his way with it on the jacks not much of an impact for king in game two even more of a stomp in favor of genji and no team maybe worldwide feels like they're just going through the motions more than genji this split i i truly hope that between them and kt they're sharpening each other's skills enough heading into worlds because it feels like genji and kt really have not been tested in 95 percent of the games this split I think they're kind of obviously done a disservice by not having T1 be at that power level that we have seen them be at for obviously and we take for granted that they are going to be at in the LCK and be another one of these teams. You can challenge yourself, you know, learn from these type of situations. It's crazy to look at the record that Gen.G has put out and realize that, you know what, we're actually on track for matching last year's, the summer split, the record-breaking run from Gen G, yet we're still not getting that type of power sensor, that type of overwhelming hype the way that we were last year, most likely, again, due to this lack of another competitor in the LCK to really change things up at that top level, and the combination of what we have seen from MSI and the power levels of the LPL squad. And, you know, KT is right there as well with five losses. You might have two teams tie the game score record in a single split, which obviously is absolutely insane. That other record you alluded to pays setting a record for kills passing Guma in a single split. And it's still mind-blowing that we've already got a title. He's been to MSI. Now he's setting a record. This is still the rookie year for Pays. It feels like we've been watching him for three years because he's so good he's so dominant and so explosive 
for this Gen G team. He brings pretty much that ruler experience without being ruler. And there's obviously going to be a time where that buck stops. And there is that difference between the two. And you are realizing, you know, what weakness, blah, 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 how you need to shore it up, all those type of things. But right now, this year has been so spectacular, so special and magical for someone like Pace to be able to step in, instantly deliver, and then learn and thrive as the year continues to go on. Setting this record is one other feather in his cap. And even though you wanted maybe more out of Hanwa, wanted the miracle upset against Genji, now we have on the weekend D plus versus Hanwa, both 11 and 6, third place on the line. And you might say third place. Who really cares about that? Well, Faker's back, and whoever wins that matchup 100% is not picking T1 in that opening round of playoffs. I tell you what, if T1 had any little bit of a wobble in Faker's return, maybe you can entertain that. It's not really that big of a deal. It's a big deal at this point, because I think with Faker back with a little bit more time, of course, with this run up towards that LCK playoffs, you have to believe that things are going to get even better uh, for this T1 organization. That machine, it's going to start picking up momentum, start rolling. Faker is involved. You got to be careful. And if you are a squad like DK or Hanwha Life, I don't care how confident you might uh, be feeling about yourself or how down you're feeling about yourself. You don't want to run into the Faker buzzsaw in that first round at very least. Important matchup between these two on the weekend. And one of the things that is common across all teams, all regions, is the aura that is Faker. So yes, you better believe both these squads seen him return. And like, good God, give me DRX in that first round so we can rack up a few more championship points. Saturday's the day. LPL Finals. JDG versus LNG. First final for Tarzan in the LPL. Obviously, Sky Scout already has three LPL titles to his name. JDG, the absolute unstoppable behemoth in the LPL, going to be massive favorites in this one. When you go, you know, across the board trying to highlight, give the avenue for LNG, you're taking pride in that five game set they played earlier in the playoffs when Kanavi had his worst split or his worst series of summer for sure, maybe even the whole year. So. Yeah, imagine he's not going to have that again. So how do you draw an angle for LNG in this series? you got to find yourself the secret sauce. And that secret sauce for me with this LNG team is making sure Scout gets through any of this little bit of the early game. Because if he gets through that and he is popping off on this Tristana, on this Azir-type champions, then I think you've got that shot to hang in there. It's going to be difficult, of course. That is no uh, understatement going against a team like JDG, and as you outlined, that is one of the other chances that you have. You better believe Kanavi is going to be better and on top of his game and prepared for this matchup, but you got to have that edge as Tarzan. That is one of those things that can be that difference maker, that punch in the side for LNG to make sure that they are the ones pushing this series to the very max because I think that's all you got to be hoping for if you are LNG. Get yourself to a deciding game, a game five type of situation, and then it's all up in the air. And, you know, we forget that last game five, Scout was 3-0 and on Tristana, and it was looking really good for LNG until the disaster top lane dive where they end up racking up four kills and the game just completely snowballs out of control from there. But they were down in game four, bounced back. There's so many positives to be taken if you are LNG from that previous series. It was the most JDG's been tested you know, aside from the few upset losses to Weibo and IG in the regular season. But I, even if Kanavi's playing better, you feel like, you know, Tarzan last series, we're getting three straight Maokai games. He's going to need to showcase more than that, even though it looked great. And for whatever reason, BLG didn't ban it. You feel like you're going to need some spicy picks in the jungle for this one. Ooh, it's something to change it up. And one of the other places that I think that you can look for a little bit of spice, maybe into that bottom lane that we have seen become so standard with the Zaya, the Kaisa. Yes, those are the strong picks. There still are other options, some fringe options that can circle around, be something special and different in that bottom lane. And one of the two players that you could ever count on being like that in the LPO is Ruler and Mr. Gala on the other side. I'm looking for Gala have a little bit of pride and say, uh-uh, you can't just step into the LPL 
and take every single championship, every single award that you want. There's other ADCs that have been here and have been getting it done. I want Gala to put some pride out there for LNG. And listen, Gala, I think in terms of team fighting prowess, explosiveness, can actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ruler. Where I'm a little worried is that laning phase because you've seen Ruler and Missing even against... 80 carries like Elk, the premier creme de la creme of the LPL. They're going to be up 20 CS in 20 minutes. They're getting turret plates, especially if Kanavi's giving them attention. We have seen Ruler snowball a game before he even has two items on an 80 carry. Well, we've seen them obviously demolish the 2v2. We've seen even Ruler demolish the 2v1 when he's just left down there by himself. So yes, you got to be very careful because any of those advantages picked up specifically in that bottom lane for JDG is a quick power trip, a quick ticket to that Snowball Express where that is getting the game out of your hand, out of control. You keep that part in to some degree, then we can start managing and looking at the other avenues, the other angles of attack. Tough one when you're LNG and you're saying that you're one of your biggest leaders just scout and against him is gonna be night on the side for JDG. Yeah, I mean, any, pretty much any other team you feel so good about a lot of these matchups uh, for LNG, but again, that's just the JDG effect, you know. Storyline-wise, I'd love to see Tarzan pick up his first LPL title, scout LNG go to Worlds, because I've obviously winning clinches them that, but you kind of just want the Golden Road to still be a possibility for JDG, right? I th it's going to be four games is the way I think it is. Unfortunately, it is LNG not getting to that decisive game five. I would love to predict that we get to that silver scrapes. It's a banger. We're having a great time. Five full games. JDG, they're going to shut the door on that dream. They're going to close it just short, not give LNG even that sniff of an opportunity to grab the trophy themselves. The other main reason I, I want to maybe see LNG win is... Based on how BLG floundered out of playoffs, I kind of need to see them prove themselves to get to Worlds as opposed to just booking their ticket with the second seed fresh off two straight series losses. Yeah, it certainly is a world where obviously you're still excited, still hyped about BLG even going without being tested in that type of way. But it is that extra cherry on top and it is that extra bit of practice that I think a lot of teams, when you get to the World Championship, kind of look back and go, oh, you know what? one more series to sharpen up one more chance to be exposed to this type of strategy this type of thought whatever would have been that opportunity that angle that experience that they need to be over the top to be that extra level of preparation a squad like blg getting a couple of extra cracks at some of these teams in the gauntlet certainly would be a leveling up experience as lethal as jdg has looked no way I'm giving this a 3-0 stomp in their way. LNG's giving a pushback at the bare minimum in this series. Feels like a pretty substantial drop-off to look at LNG, JDG. <laughs> and then we got to pivot to LCS playoffs. It's, it's a bit of a slide down a cliff, so to make it a little less drastic, we'll start on the winner's bracket side of things. You know, you got C9, EG, NRG, and uh, Golden Guardians, and... EG Cloud9, that matchup was not kind to the geniuses in the regular season. Yes, some of those had Armeo in the lineup, but they'll have to have seriously leveled up to be competitive in this series. Yeah, and I think that we have seen a leveling up of these evil geniuses so far in playoffs, getting that decisive edge in that game five against TSM. Not enough that I'm ready to say that they are up for this challenge against a Cloud9, especially after, as you mentioned, some of their struggles that we have seen against this specific team throughout the course of this summer split. Difference, of course, being that we won't have our Mayo in, most likely we'll be shining for this uh, Evil Geniuses team and what he can do, what he can unlock for this team with Jojo Pyun. That could be the type of angle that you're looking for if you are these Evil Geniuses. And listen, both of, both of these squads, the two fastest game times in the LCS, there's... There's definitely been some stomps. You remember early on in the split, EG was beaten up on everybody. They also got stomped on the other side, which helps play uh, to some of that um, game time. But yeah, I mean, JoJo and Manez is going to be probably the key matchup in this one. We can see if Unforgiven and Ayla can hold their own against Berserker and Zven because it's not often the laning phase where Berserker's doing the damage. It's when these team fights come around and they have entire comps built around him. 
It is a problem for him. Dish, he's getting that damage, dishing it out. No problemo for Mr. Berserker down in the bottom lane is the problem for any of these other teams. Evil Genius is included. I think that we are going to have one of these ones where it, it should be relatively even all the way through the, the laning phase. I think that if you're looking on the side of Evil Geniuses, someone like Ayla could provide a little bit more on the engage support in comparison to someone like Sven could be one of these angles we're seeing. The Alistar, oh, maybe that could be a nice pick seeing through in this little one for me to shake things up in that bottom lane because right now the way that Unforgiven is playing, especially the way that he's dishing out that damage in team fights for Evil Geniuses, yes, you can't stack up to what Berserker is in the LCS. He's that pinnacle right now. Unforgiven is about as close as you can get. And other angle for this series, especially after that TSM series where we were highlighting revenge so many times. If he's at that level, it, this is time for Fudge to step up because we've been calling for it for a full split plus now. If he doesn't bring up his level for playoffs, you can't feel great about Cloud9 internationally. And this is test number one for him. And I have seen many a times, many a weeks go by where there's some little iteration, one little crumble, an extra little cookie of some drama between Revenge and Fudge. There is some trash talk that has definitely gone on between these two in game, out of game, out there on the rift. This is what we want to see, this clutch matchup between the two of them after Revenge really stepped up in that TSM matchup to be that difference maker, to be another outlet of power and damage for this Evil Genius team. Fudge is certainly going to be one looking to shut that door. Slowing things down for that other winner's uh, bracket matchup because NRG and Golden Guardians, they got some of the slowest game times in the LCS. Head-to-head, -head, they had the longest game of the split, 50 minutes plus, and intriguing about this matchup is nrg won both regular season matchups you had dokla popping off on the gangplank in one of them you had an almost incredible throw from nrg in the other one that ended up lasting 50 <laughs> minutes but i don't think anyone was expecting nrg to kind of dominate team liquid as badly as they did in that first round so I, I got more faith that there's an upset in this matchup than the c9 eg one Ooh, I'm smelling a little bit of a, some LCS silver scrapes possibility with this matchup with the way these two teams are heading into it. It's crazy to think about what, what odds we had to land on this one with NRG and the Golden Guardians because as you outlined, out of all the teams really looking through this type of one, the one that was consistently that thorn in the side, the one that was able to disrupt these Golden Guardians, was NRG more than any of these other teams I think really that we saw throughout this split in the LCS even with that one where it is mostly NRG losing control on what they had to establish early and it is Golden Guardians finding a way to push back into it this should be a good back and forth series that we are seeing right now and given the form that NRG just showed us in their playoff series prior feeling good that we are going to dial up some silver scrapes on this series yeah, I think this is the more difficult one to do on paper, even though Golden Guardians did turn it on at the end. It feels like Cloud9 is the only squad that's had their number in those head-to-heads this whole year, but NRG, I don't think anybody is sleeping on what these guys have been doing uh, over the last couple of weeks. And even Cloud9, they're, they're top of the table killers. The problem is they just also drop games to the bottom feeders in the LCS. So if they can lock in that consistency... I see a potential deep playoff run ahead for NRG and the boys living on that CLG name. We still got to talk the loser side of things because there's so many teams. There's four of them down here. And I mean, you look at these squads and to me, I'm immediately thinking, who's got a deep run in them? There's always one miracle run in the summer split. So out of these four teams, I mean, you got Jensen, Mr. I Don't Miss Worlds. I mean, maybe the most the most interesting one to me might actually be Dig, just because you have Rich when Aatrox is coming meta, Jensen, the old veteran who doesn't miss worlds. Dig might be the most compelling storyline for me. Well, number one focus for me is not about Jensen missing worlds. It's about if he's going to miss beating out on TSM in this series that they've got ahead of them today. That is the big one, uh, for Dignitas versus TSM. And yes, Dignitas is one of those interesting ones for the, a lot of those reasons that you outlined right there. Someone like Rich and with the way we see the top lane champion pool moving could be a very explosive option for an LCS team. Jensen saying, hey, man, 
I'm booking that world's ticket. It better be there. You got a little bit more business to do other than taking care of TSM today, which is going to be the first one. You got a good challenger ahead of you on the other side of the rift and insanity for TSM looking to get that bounce back for the squad. Yeah, you only got, you know, five more series after this before you want to be <laughs> clinching worlds as well. But uh, yeah, TSM, you know, no slouch. Took EG to five games, four competitive um, series there. But uh, I mean, they could beat Dig. But aside of that, it's kind of a shock that it's Team Liquid 100 Thieves on that other side. Because I feel like storyline, my heart wants Dig to go on a run. But logically... Whoever wins this 100 Thieves Team Liquid one, you feel like has the best chance of making some noise. And I think Team Liquid is still a cut above the other three squads left here. Out of everybody in this bottom tier, you are leaning towards Team Liquid. What we have seen from this team, obviously, over the course of the year, what you can, you know, expect given some of the changes, the meta that is going to be shaping up, how that can affect what these teams, what the players want to play on this Team Liquid roster and then really it is about APA and the look and how different and how they have seemed with him in the lineup. Yes, there still are a couple of slip ups and some dropped games that you can look back on. But overall, this rookie has stepped in and delivered that type of confidence in this team and the type of execution that they are capable of that you can have this type of feeling towards them in the bottom half of the in this lower bracket of the LCS play. And you do feel like he was really dropped in, you know, only a couple weeks left in the regular season. That was his playoff debut. He did not look the same level as he did in the regular season. I'll, I'll even give him the benefit of the doubt and chalk that up to first playoff jitter. So I'm expecting a much better Team Liquid uh, in this loser's run because they did not... They didn't have that it factor that we saw throughout the last few weeks in that matchup against NRG. And listen, Yon gets Rookie of the Year, okay, but... Do you see how many votes APA is getting? And this guy played not even half the split. He plays one more week, maybe two more weeks at the very most. He's locking it up. That's kind of how crazy it would have been and how, uh, you know, what a rocket it was into the LCS scene to have APA join this Team Liquid team and, and really change that complexion around it. It's going to be fun seeing these matchups. I think a lot of times we, we rip on having these many teams in the LCS playoffs, but right now, kind of the way it seems, with Dignitas, Team Liquid, 100 Thieves, these could be some good matchups ahead of us. I think the bare minimum I want out of this playoff run in the LCS is we need Cloud9 to be tested. If they just run through this bracket again, we're going through the same cycle, they're not really tested, and they're gonna get absolutely stomped internationally. Well, I think that could be the story anyway. Probably have been either way, but... <laughs> But we gotta check every angle we can, every check every stone to try and see if there's one last secret to try and unlock a little bit more power, a little bit more efficiency out there on the world stage. I'm still looking at that Team Liquid matchup and hoping for something spicy, something interesting to come through for APA. I think I don't think, as you were mentioning, kind of looking at how things went, that struggle in the first playoff series. I think part of that was the champion pool being banned out, that identification on that Ziggs pick, which was so different and so powerful for Team Liquid. I hope that they have something cooked up in that type of vein, but have a similar, a safety option where there is a little bit of secret sauce left over for Team Liquid. We all take our healthy dose of hopium and copium for the LCS as the real playoff push begins. But that's it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.